Hi there and welcome to the next in our series of practical simulator sessions. In this video I want to go back to uh, the striking videos that uh, we did recently. Uh, there's two currently in the series. This is the third and I want to talk about what could be considered uh, one of the most important parts of striking which is the pull-off. Uh, we are in the situation where if we're ringing in a tower with the bells open we are by default a public performance and that first pull-off should be as good as all the rest but of course it has to be practiced and yes you can do it on a practice night but sometimes it's useful to get a bit more feedback about how good you are and how we and whether you've actually improved uh, your striking. Now I have virtual belfry uh, set up here one of the unique things with Virtual Belfry is that the videos are uh, timed very specifically so that you have to follow the smaller bells more closely and the bigger bells you have to give them more room. Uh, so when you're using the visuals to actually pull off, if you are right close to a, a small bell, then you must uh, ensure that you're following it a little closer. But in simple terms, the pull-off is the first time that you start in rounds. It could, of course, be uh, in any other sequence. You could pull off in, in queens, one, three, five, two, four, six, if you wanted to. Um, and in fact, in Virtual Belfry, you can use set up your first pull-off start row. So if you want to, to play with that, you can. But generally, it's enough just to pull off uh, in rounds at the beginning and if you pull off and then immediately stop after the backstroke so you uh, do one um, hand stroke one backstroke and then uh, stand the bell and stop we can get some feedback from the striking window as to how we've actually performed so to show you how that works uh, I've currently selected myself as bell number five that gives me as much time as possible uh, after the treble goes uh, to get my uh, my heading gear and actually try and strike uh, properly. So uh, let's give that a go now. Stand. Okay, and we stand straight away. That means that the information that we get from the striking window will be for that single hand stroke and back stroke. And if we look at that, sadly I was 60 milliseconds late uh, on that particular strike. So I was a little bit late. It didn't sound too bad to me, to be honest, but the numbers don't lie. So you can continue, have another go. Okay, I think I was probably early on that one. And yes, you can see I was early. The hand stroke was 73 milliseconds early. So whilst we stay in this striking window, there are a couple of options uh, for when you're doing any sort of striking, uh, including the pull off, where you can get information immediately or feedback immediately. When you have the striking window selected, there is a tab on the left hand side for striking and there are three options. So it says during ringing, you can have the simple, a visual beat and blank. So if we first look at the simple option, what that will do is it will give you feedback of every stroke, whether it's early or late with a red or a blue bar. So if we just do that again, bell number five. Stand. Okay, uh, yeah, I was very late. I could hear that, I could see it, but I'm not, of course, getting the visual cues. Um, I'm just having to rely on hearing and getting myself lined up and ready to ring. Stand. Again late. So what you can do then is take the second option which is a visual beat 
Now the visual beat will actually give you a dot that moves at the same time that the bells are striking. And you'll see that in the, across the centre of the screen. Stand. So again, I'm late. The visual cues are at the point at which the bell strikes, not at the point at which the ringer is seen to be pulling. So therefore, it's not that much better for me personally than having no visual cues at all and just listening. The third option is blank, which basically gives you no feedback at all. Um, you could use that if someone is becoming too reliant on seeing the dots. If you're ringing for a longer time, then you can just remove it uh, so that they can't see them. So I'm definitely somebody who needs to have uh, the ropes in front of me. Stand. Okay, and I'm a little bit early. Um, but of course, with a simulator, it's really simple to create other towers. So we ring here in a six bell tower. I do go to the village next door. They have eight bells, but I don't ring there as much as I do, obviously, in my own tower. So consequently, having the ability to ring in an eight bell tower, um, just for the pull off, for the difference in speed, the fact that it's, it is much quicker, things happen much quicker, is very useful to me. So I can say, right, OK, I know I'm going to be ringing bell number four. I tend to ring um, the, the larger bells seven and eight but occasionally I like to go uh, on to the smaller bells so if I try and do my pull off on four because I don't want to let my tower down when visiting Stand. okay generally that would probably be a bit fast I think that's still a two hour fifty uh, peel speed but the same goes to when you're going to a ten bell tower Last year I went a couple of times to Chester Cathedral, a uh, 12 bell tower. I'd never rung 12 bells before and I found it quite difficult when I first started because it was just the onslaught of uh, on my senses with the noise and all the motion that was happening and also the speed. Things, even though very often you're ringing much slower um, on a bell by bell basis, the amount of um, apparent speed because you have 12 bells was was quite uh, shocking to me and I didn't actually think before I went I should have set up the simulator to actually uh, ring as a 12 bell tower to try and get some um, some do a bit of preparation okay so we can get feedback through the striking window of everything that that, that we do we can start and stop. We don't have to have a method. We're only worrying about rounds. But if you want to start in a in a different order, so you want to start in Queens, you can set that up uh, using the start with option uh, on the left hand side. So if you're a, a tower that likes to start in, in other ways, then then that can be useful to you. Um, and of course, it's the more practice you have with the pull off the easier you will find it uh, when you get into the tower so there you go a few things that you can do uh, with a simulator to help you with preparing the pull off to improve your striking from your very first strike uh, within the tower so i hope that's been useful if you have any comments please leave them below uh, please if you haven't already uh, done so subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Always oh, sounds a bit strange to say that when doing videos like this. But if you uh, if you hit the bell, uh, you'll get notified of all uh, newly uploaded videos. Um, so, no, nothing more to say. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>